or that deny you from using the death spite and the fiery war axe effectively. Uh, but there is a lot of damage coming the other way. You know, the fact is, Tice hasn't been able to stabilize just yet. Yeah, he needs a little bit mostly, of help from his deck. It's mostly because Tice didn't get any weapons, and uh, getting weapons here is super important, like fireworks or death spite. Right now, Tice is just throwing cards and um, and fighting back, but Gara got initiative, so without those weapons, Tice is behind. Uh, maybe he will be able to come back, but like look even at the Dread Corsair. Like without those weapons, the card is just uh, kind of useless with four four mana. There is the first Death Spite though. Yeah, it's gonna be huge. The Death Spite will be very impactful um, in a couple of turns. In the meantime, uh, Tice getting a pretty good effect on the Mirror Entity, just copying a two two. Uh, dealing with two of the minions at the same time. Bling Drawn could be a huge swing again. True Silver, Silver Champion. Champion. But I see a, a weapon with one attack. Is it the Gorhal? Or one durability. Is it Gorhal? Might be. I think so. Look at it. The Dreaded Course here costs zero. Yeah, that's <laughs> Gorhal. Doesn't matter, though. Gorhal uh, still is very painful here to do. Yeah. It's, it pro you, you also probably would love to have Death's Bite instead. Um, so what do you do here? Like you do play Corsair because it's for free. Uh, you do execute something. I guess you play frothing and armor up, or do you feel like it's more important to play the Grim Patron? I don't think so. Frothing is just your best answer here while being defensive. Oh man, a one one by the way came out a novice engineer. That is pretty awful for Gar. Almost as bad as it gets short of Lord Walker Cho. By the way, it's over. No, there is the there is the taunt. So free damage five. Yeah, Gar is really close to to winning here. He just needs one of the burn spells. Noyotron is not a card he needed, especially versus Green Patrons. Oh man, reversing switch. He is so close to killing his opponent. It's just nuts. Yeah. Oh, it's actually nuts. Gara's going all face. Six points of damage. He has the weapon. Two damage. Two points of health. Yeah, that Blink Tron gave him eight points of damage. Ooh, so but he this has... is so tight because if you know if he's able to survive, this is really bad news. But I, I think that's actually it. Um, with the ping, like, all right. So with armor up, Tice can go up to <clears throat> to what to free right now. And then just, uh, yeah, he's just dead. Like, he can't do anything here. The ping yeah, and no the attack from Novice. That reversing switch nailed it. Like, the reversing switch and uh, plating on Novice was enough to kill Tice. Yeah, really good stuff. Uh, good spot there from Gara. Really being able to corner Tice, despite the fact that he had a lot of powerful cards. Tice didn't have... Too many of his super whirlwind effects, like you said, didn't have weapons early on. Just took too much damage, but he was, you know, you can see one turn away from stabilizing. And if he stabilized, who knows what might have happened. Uh, yeah. there, he probably would have been able to turn the game super quickly. He had a Frothing Berserker that would get out of control. He had Gromosh and Dr. Boom. So it was just so tight. And that's where the delicate balance of this deck has to be strict. Uh, stricken if you're playing the Grim Patron Warrior because even though you do have some amazing combos uh, if you die before it there's no point. Also uh, really well spotted by Gara like a lot of players make a mistake like looking at plating and uh, reversing switch and thinking hey I can't get any attack from those cards because if I, I have this 1-1 one, one, if I reverse switch nothing happens uh, if I make it a 1-2 nothing happens right but then Gara actually got two points of damage from it because he switches on a turn when he, where it could attack, and then he could attack with it for the next turn. So spotted lethal there and an exceptional play. All right. Uh, now we don't know exactly what Gara has here for game three, but if it is Grim Patient Warrior, uh, expect this game to ramp up much quicker than a Control Warrior game. How is Grim Patient versus um, Control Warrior? Uh, versus Control Warrior? Oh, man. I hate it as Grim Page and Warrior. It's one of the very hard matchups because uh, it, they just have so much damage. They're rarely going to play a minion for three or less attack outside of the Acolytes, Cruel Taskmasters, and the 
armor smiths. But even then, if they're really smart about it, they just make sure not to let you be successful. And they just have so much removal. I, you know, I personally really think it's a hard matchup. Although you have no indication of it just yet that it is Control Warrior. Or, you know, it's just because he plays the Death Spite, just because he armored up, doesn't mean that he's not holding Emperor Thorson with a bunch of fro uh, Frothing Berserkers and Warsong Commanders. Yeah, yeah, it can still be the, um, the Green Patron. Uh, so for Dice here, like, he doesn't have the draw. He got both combo cards, but um, you can't use them yet. Uh, that Fire War Axe is nice to have. Oh, the Shield Block tells us everything. So it is a Control Warrior from Gara, And we can see the... Oh, on Nyx... Wait! It's the Dragon Warrior! <laughs> oh, he's got that Onyxia Whirlwind strategy, though. <laughs> yeah. That synergy. That's, that's the Gara synergy. Like, Deathwing and Paladin with Tyrion. Jeez. I have no idea how good this deck is at all. I mean, on paper, it makes sense, right? Yeah. Playing Dragons well, Control Warriors, like... Dragons are a much are like a control-oriented archetype. If you're holding dragons, uh, you do better stuff with these cards. Now, granted, at the same time, uh, you also do have um, some really interesting scenarios where like, you're already playing Alex Straza anyways, so why not just throw in some more dragons? You might even be playing Ysera, but what else is he cutting? Is he cutting Gromash? Is he cutting Ragnaros? Uh, I'm curious to see how it works out. I think you do cut Ragnaros, you do cut Geddon. Um, because you, you have those Blackwing Corruptors. So you will be able to, to... You have Fire Elementals, basically, right? For 5 mana. That deal free damage and have good stats. And uh, you just add, like... Isera was already there in Warrior. Like, Alex Straza and Isera. Um, some people played it uh, during Seed Story Cup. And then um, those dragons were present. And so you just add on Ixia, which is so great. Uh, and our 8 8 that spawns a lot of um, minions. And those two Fire Elementalists, they, they will uh, help you to, to deal with the board. I'm Well, I'm curious to see how it works. Like for now, it works for Gara because he has that Corruptor and he has uh, the Dragon Hand. I wield the power. Yeah, looks like it. It's That's interesting a... because he's already put this uh, deck so defensive. And uh, you know now this is the this is the turn for Grim Patron shenanigans. So he doesn't want to drop Armor Smith, aware that his opponent could play Grim Patron more or Grim Patron plus the Warsong Commander. And now, how does he deal now, with it? Everybody gets in here. Yeah, but it's not even that impactful because he just got Shield Slam, and then uh, the Whirlwind effect should take care of the rest, right? So he, he just, oh wait, uh, no, there's two of them now. Okay, yeah, it's, really, it's starting to get a little complicated for sure. It's really tough to get rid of them. Like every time I see a couple of dwarves, people think like, hey, I have that whirlwind effect, let's get rid of it. Or like, I have a swipe. And then you look at this board and you're like, wait, I can't really kill everything because they will call another dwarf. Oh, uh, okay. The execute allows him to deal with it now, right? So he can shield block, shield slam, execute. And yep. then uh, kill off with the whirlwind effect. That was a really big draw. But there's Dr. Boom coming. Yeah, Dr. Boom is a pretty big deal. And uh, I believe that works. Warsong actually survived. No? All right, there is a whirlwind. But that's all the removal. So then you play Dr. Boom. Get some mileage out of that. <laughs> there is not a green patron. So if uh, if Tyce is able to spawn the board or the, the swarm the board with dwarves again, then that might be tough. On the uh, it certainly will be tough. Wow. Okay. Um, I guess you do Green Patron Whirlwind. First attack, obviously, and uh, <laughs> slam. Yeah, just. I guess because he's going to Whirlwind anyways, so he just might have to draw a card, see what goes on. Oh, if he had another mana crystal, he'd be able to do some ridiculous things, man. Yeah, with, with Warsong. Oh, he's still Does going he still for do it. it. Does he still do it? What is his plan? Like, is he planning to kill it with the bombs? Wow. Let's... The Whirlwind synergies. All three cars here. 
Yeah. But you still want to use the whirlwind this turn. All right. I think he's going to attack face with the boom. Yeah, and the, and the bombs. And then he hopes that he's going to kill Onyxia with the bombs. Such uh, gamble. Just have one of them and it's a 50-50 as long as it hits the Onyxia. And that's All 10 right. extra damage on the Frothing Berserker just for this one whirlwind. The first bomb misses, the second bomb hits uh -oh. for free. It's perfect for Tice. And that's awful. Uh, Gara might just die right here. He doesn't Gara have a dragon. Also... Blackwing yeah, no Crusher can't even do three damage. Oh man, this is tough. He face tanks the 40 and free. This has to be painful. Oh my goodness. <laughs> But uh, you it's know, actually it's, hilarious. You gotta do what you gotta do. That armor smith hopefully can climb him back. And it's pretty significant, you know that um, that sludge belcher armor smith combination gains so much health. It's kind of like Gara's back at fifteen. Yeah, but on the other hand, uh, Gara doesn't have a way to deal with this Doctor Boom. I mean, he can face stun it again. It's so funny. Like he has so much life gain, but he doesn't have the any removal. Uh, he needs to stop like it's a Sarah or like Straza. <clears throat> bro. Oh, bro. Bro that is good. could be useful. Especially considering I think Armorsmiths, even post patch, still don't lose brawls. And he can also <laughs> yeah. eliminate a lot of the card draw too. This needs to this needs to just hit, and if he does, he's gonna survive, I believe. Yeah, any any minion on his side that survives is great. Okay, it's still it's still alright. Yeah. Because now he ar will armor up and uh, then he's resistant to death spite. So death spite is not killing him. Um, Warson Commander is killing him though. Yeah, it's true. Being the... nice, I guess, is golden. Warson Commander would have been. Awful, just because of the, the one attack minion. But how likely is it your opponent has those two cards? You know. All right. Well, he's gonna try to go for as much board presence as possible, dropping his armor smith a little bit later, so that way he can uh, maximize how much board uh, presence he has. Makes sense. He doesn't need that much armor here. Taskmaster allows him to kill off one patron, but he can't kill both because, again, he doesn't have a dragon in hand, so Blackwing Corruptor is effectively just a, a more expensive Lost Tall Strider. Yeah, but it's still the shield maiden turn and trying to escape the range. And uh, it doesn't look good for Tyus. Like, he needs something. Like, maybe a battle rage right now would be amazing. Oh, there is a battle rage. Wow, three cards coming up. That's bad news for Gara. In a rage. Ooh, in a rage. Oh, Gara looks so Whoa. Oh, he's one damage on lethal. That's 15 points. Yeah. <laughs> wow. You okay. go for it? I think you go for it, right? Uh, I think you do. If there is a like Straza, all right. So if there is a like Straza, what does it change? Nothing. Oh, wait, wait. You can um, you can just play Gromash, in a rage the Grim Patron, <laughs> train to the five five. And then, uh, and then go from there. That's probably the the safer bet. Yeah. And uh, I would not expect the second brawl. All right. Okay. So Gara looking at that Corruptor. Can it save him? There is a dragon. So the <sighs> yeah, Yasera makes the most sense here. It just he has to make a gameplay move. Or game winning move. But Gar is just going to tap out, and uh, Tice is going to take this series 3 to 1. When Patient Warrior doing some work. I just found some 6 synergy. Uh, Isera is actually summoning dragons as well. So there is Craptor Isera synergy. Like, even after playing Isera, you can still get the Drake, and Drake is the dragon. That's a good point. Emerald Drake is a valid dragon to be holding, so that way you can get the bonus off the Blackwing Corruptor. Really good observation, Nimsh. Spot that on. wraps up our uh, first series. We're done. 
with uh, the first game. Tice defeats Gar and moves up into the standings. Do you have an overall stat check on uh, how these players are doing in the league? Um, I can quickly check that. I, I'm looking at that. By the way, Ty's winning versus Gar again. So Gar didn't get his revenge for the DreamHack Bucharest finals. Uh, right now, um, on the rankings that I can see, Thais is in the fourth place and Gara is on in the ninth place. So Thais is doing pretty well. Like he has five wins. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Thais is pretty high up in the standings. Gar, in the meantime, is just kind of stuck in the middle. He's two and four, it looks like, after this entire series. That's not going to be very helpful for seeding. But in the end, it doesn't, it doesn't truly impact him at the moment because he's not eliminated. Uh, so we'll see if it ends up being picked around come playoff time. Uh, so don't worry, Gara fans. He'll be back. I know a lot of people have been really recently loving Gara, especially his commentary. And coming up, we have Dog versus Sixo. And uh, that's going to be a really good time. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a few minutes and uh, we're going to have an, a, a quick commercial break. When we come back, we're going to have more action here at the Hearthstone Pro-Am. Before we go, though, we want to remind you guys about things like the Shield tablet. Uh, it's a new thing that's been coming out here. Really good performance for uh, a tablet in general. Runs on the Android. Really cool games and stuff. Nimsh, how are you enjoying your tablet? Oh, I love it. Obviously, I play a lot of Hearthstone on it, but also you can um, play other games. And uh, there is the grid functionality where basically NVIDIA streams games on your tablet from their server. And, um, and you can play games like Borderlands to, um, to basically PC games. And it's also important that you can connect your tablet uh, via the HDM, HDMI cable to your display. So it's like just you don't need a PC. You basically can use your tablet and a display and it's uh, doing the same thing. Yeah, that's right. I think the tablet came with the free game for me. It was the trying to game. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's like a pretty nice way to just demonstrate the the graphics plus the functionality of it. Really good stuff. The stylus, in my opinion, is my favorite part of it. I just like the really smooth interface of it. And, of course, they keep updating it with a lot of cool patches and hot fixes based on the Android system. So check it out. You see a little bit of graphic there at the bottom of your screen. Uh, you go ahead uh, and look up the Shield tablet as well as keep the, up to date with all the scores and standings at esports.geforce.com and see how your favorite players are doing as well as maybe some of the other amateur quote-unquote players uh, of how they're performing as well. And with that, we're going to take our first break. When we come back, match number two here, week seven of the Pro-Am tournament brought to you by NVIDIA. <laughs> 